1943. Dumating ang mga sundalong hapon din sa amin bayan. Ngayon, nagtanong sila kung nasaan ang Kenyan Civil Barrio. Eh, ang itinuro nila yung tatay ko kasi kasalukuhin natin yung Civil Barrio noon ng tatay ko. Ang sabi eh, nila, ilan lahat ang anak mo? Sabi, walo po yun mga yan. Sabi naman ng tatay ko, hilera, hilera, pinahilera kami. Binibilang nila kami. Pipito lang kami nandun. Ngayon, sino nga aling ka? Sabi mo, walo ang anak mo. Bakit ilabas mo ang nga yung anak mo? Guerrilla yun. Sabi mo ganyan. Kasi katapos yung isa namang, ano, isang sundalong hapo. Inuha yung bayan yung itanil, inahalap-lap yung balat ng tatay ko. Narcisa Claveria or Lola Isa is 91 years old. She recounted her family's suffering as if World War II ended yesterday. She was 13 then. Yung kapatid kong dalawang bunso na babae at lalaki, ano, nandun doon sila, sinasalukuban nila yung hapon kasi, ano, yung nanay ko, nakataas na yung sayak. Pagkatapos nung, ano, nung, Ganun na, no? Hila-hila kami. Ilalayo kami doon sa tatay ko. Hila-hila kami. Dadalhin kami sa garison. Tapos narinig ko pa na malayo ko. Mga anak ko, asawa ko. Eh, saan na kayo? Tuluhan mo naman ako. Yun ang huli kong narinig na tinig ng tatay ko. Napalinun na ako doon sa amin. Muusok na. Kaya lang ko na yung nanay ko, tatay ko. Dalawa akong kapatid. Sinama nila sa sunog. Ngayon, nung ano na, hindi ko alam kung ilang buwan na bago gumaling ito. Ang sabi ng karasasi sa akin, maligo ka na, tambaho mo na. Nung ano, kakasok na yun ako, Hinila ako ngayon dun sa, dun sa kwarto. Dun ako minahasok. Ang dami ako natikman sa kanina na hirap. Kasi nung nagbubuno ang kami, andyan ang tadyakan ako. Andyan ako. Wala ako magawa nun. Nung nagsimulan ng kalma din ang buhay ko. Napakahirap ang aming hinabot dahil hindi lang isang hapo na mungilid tayo sa lamang. Kaya no, kung makikita ko na tagilid na yung araw, kung pwede lang ayaw ko nang dulugod. Anong ko sana kasi pagka dumulim na, ang yan na. Pila-pila ang kanilang mga hapo. For years, she kept this story to herself, fearing discrimination and even retribution. In 1992, when she finally mustered enough courage to reveal how she'd been a sex slave, she expected no less than getting full justice. But to this day, justice has evaded Lola Isa. This is the office of Lila Pilipina, an organization founded by women's rights activists and the Comfort Women themselves in 1992, dedicated to fighting for their justice. Many of them were in their 50s and 60s when they broke their silence. Lola's already, the Filipino word for grandmother. Um, so this is the room that was occupied by some of the Lolas uh, during their younger years. They used to have rallies uh, very often on the streets and uh, it was uh, quite difficult because some of them lived far away. So it was easier for them and also to establish you know, a stronger ties among the Lolas 
who are fighting together uh, for justice. Ano gagawin niyo na naman baboy ang mga kababayan dito? Comfort women refers to women who were forced to serve Japanese soldiers as sex slaves and domestic servants during World War II. It's unclear how many Filipino comfort women there were. The La Filipina documented less than 200 cases. A vast majority of comfort women were Chinese and Koreans. In fact, three Korean women were the first to come out publicly with their experience in 1991. It triggered an international response similar to today's Me Too movement. And in 1992, Maria Rosa Hanson became the first Filipino comfort woman to make a stand. It was a very painful decision because she was already quite ill at the time that she came out there. And um, the only reason she uh, decided finally to come out was that her whole life um, after the war was such a, um, a trauma, no? it, was, uh, it was tragic for her. And so when she made the open call, um, there were actually, there were actually some um, questions that were raised uh, by the media, but um, eventually you know, she, she just held on to, their sto to that story and encouraged, actually, she became later an inspiration to many other women. More Filipino women eventually came forward with their own account of Japanese sexual slavery. So eventually the Lolas became bolder with wanting to tell their stories to the world and in 1999 this book was published. Inside there are illustrations and with the original Filipino narration and then there are Japanese and English translations. Now, these drawings were made by one of the Lolas. Her name's Romedios Bilias, and the book tells her story. The publicity was part of the plan to drum up support for the court battle. With the help of both Filipino and Japanese lawyers, the Lolas filed cases in Japan. They lost on all. The Japanese Supreme Court had said that it was an internal matter to the, to the Philippine state. No? The court said that reparations had already been paid by the Japanese government to the Philippine government after the war. No? Um, so that would already include the damages done to individuals. But the point was that at the time, no one yet had known about the military sexual slavery that had been done to Filipino women. So, you know, how can you say that it is already included in the reparations? Each victim did get compensation of around 20,000 US dollars through the Asian Women's Fund, a quasi-public foundation set up in 1995 by the Japanese government in cooperation with ordinary citizens. State money was meant for medical and welfare projects, while the atonement money came from private donations. Each of the Lolas also got a letter of apology from the Japanese Prime Minister. But these weren't what the victims were demanding. This, this was a personal apology of the Prime Minister. Um, it was not uh, resulting from an official acknowledgement of the war crimes that the, the Imperial Japan had committed. I mean, even though there is the word government here. It's only in cooperation with government. Eh? After this letter came the Asian Women's Fund, but the funds came from the Japanese people themselves. It did not come from the Japanese government itself. So it does not make any difference because the Japanese people were already supporting um, the Filipino comfort women even prior to this letter and prior to the establishment but of the Asian Women's Fund. Lola Isang is clear-minded about what justice means for her and for her friends in the campaign. Ano, ano po ba ang justicia para sa inyo? Ang justicia na hinahanap ko. Kasi sinira nila yung pagkababae ko. Yung tunay na justicia na hinahanap ko sa kanila. Aminin ang sundalong, aminin ang gobyerno nga po na 
Kremen ang nagawa ng mga sundalo nga po dito sa Pilipinas nung panahon ng Pangulong Dingmaan. Kasama na doon ang legal na compensation. Dahil sinira nila yung ano ko, buhay ko. Meron pong sulat na ipinadala sa inyo yung Prime Minister ng Japan nung panahon na yun na kumbaga nagsusorry sa nangyari sa inyo. Tapos meron po yata kayo natanggap na konting halaga yung Asian Women's Fund. Hindi ho sapat para sa inyo yon Hindi sapat para sa amin dahil ano, sinira nila ang buhay namin eh. Hindi lang yun ang katumbas ng pagkababae namin. So yung, yung sorry po, yung sorry yung sulat ng Prime Minister, para sa inyo hindi yun pag-amin ng krimen? Binalik na namin yun eh. Sa kanila, binalik namin yun. Pero yung pera, hindi lang ni Binalek dahil yun ang ginamit namin sa pagpatuloy ng ano, aming labas. So, binalik niyo yung sulat, hindi yung tinanggap, pero yung pera, tinanggap niyo? Oo, oh, tinanggap namin. Yun ang ano, ang ginagamit namin kung nagano kami. Tapos pagkatapos nun, parang wala na nangyari, no? Wala na nangyari hanggang ngayon. Abe! When Lola Isa wants an apology issued by the Japanese government addressing the matter directly in court documents, Manila indicated satisfaction with the apology and the atonement money from Japan, which happened to be the country's biggest development aid donor. So unlike China and South Korea, the Philippine government has hardly been involved in the comfort women's quest for justice. And in recent years, monuments memorializing Filipino comfort women have been removed. Some would say it's a lost cause, especially with only a handful of the lolas alive to this day. But advocates and some of the surviving Filipino comfort women say they'll hold on to even a sliver of hope. And I believe that there will be developments under international humanitarian law that will be more favorable to individual victims who experience this kind of crimes under war situations. And that even if we lose uh, cases that uh, we file in, in the courts, but making the young people aware of what had happened in the past, making the public aware of our history as a nation, um, and making them aware of the need to be vigilant and to, um, to uh, oppose um, another aggression, a foreign aggression in the country, is already a big victory, even for the Lolas. Lola Isang isn't uh, as optimistic. I don't have any hope that they gave them the justice that they gave us. That's why I just said to them that they gave them the Hanggang hindi nila ibigay yung tulay na hostesya na hinihingi namin. Isisigaw at isisigaw pa rin namin sa buong mundo. Yung kapalpakan ng gobyerno ng Hapon para sa mga lolang inapi ng mga sundalong Hapon noong panahon ng Pangroong Dibahan. What gives Lola Isan the strength to go on is family. She has an older sister who suffered the same fate but away from their hometown. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, they were both active in the campaign for justice of Filipino comfort women. They drew courage from each other. But Lola Isang's anchor remains her husband, Aniseto. Sabi ko, yung sa mister ko, paano kaya ito? Lalabas na kaya ako. Sabi ko, ang sabi naman niya, na sa iyo, para gumaan yung kalooban mo, kung ano yung decision mo, siportaan kita. Gano ho ka-importante ang mister niyo sa buhay ninyo para malagpasan ninyo yung nangyari sa inyo? Nako, napaka-importantihan. Siguro pagka mawala sa akin yan, mauna baka magbabalik na ako. Napakabait na tao yan. Kung hindi dahil sa kanya, siguro hindi ko malampasan yung pag-iisip na hindi maganda. Kasi... Tumatroma na ako noon, takot sa takot na ako sa mga lalaki noon. Nakala ko hapon, 
ganun, na manghuhuli sa amin noon. Ayan. Nung mister ko ang nakano. It was clear how much her husband loves Yola Isa. Before we left her home, she wanted to dance with Aniseta. He seemed hesitant, but he indulged her anyway. In a seemingly unending quest for justice, nothing else, there's love of family to hold on to. Up next, a separate group of Filipino grandmothers are seeking justice from the Japanese government. But they've gotten nothing, not even a private apology, because they've been told they're not comfort women. Virginia Suarez is a public interest attorney. Among her clients, women who were sexually abused by Japanese soldiers during World War II. They are a group of women called the Malaya Lolas, which roughly translates to Grandmothers of Freedom. Hello, attorney. Good morning. Nice Over the years, lawyering has turned into advocacy for attorney Suarez. Today, she's coming with us to visit them. The last time we, we talked, you did say that you've exhausted most of the avenues. So what do you say to them when you see them? Many women died without having that chance to fight for the violence that they have committed. So that I tell the Lola to take pride with the fact that they fought their case. Even if they lost the case, they fought it and that they made the world know that this is what happened to them. That, and therefore, even if they lost the legal battle, they will, I mean, the Lolas will have the whole world demanding from Japan. So every time you hear about these Lolas dying, does the hope of being able to um, get justice for them die a little as well? I must say yes. It makes me feel really sad because um, if we're able to get justice, I want that to be felt and to be seen by Lodash. Yeah. Yeah, because if they're all dead, and it's like they will no longer feel the justice. The year 2012 was the first time I met the Malaya Lolas. All of them lived in this village of Mapaniki. At around the same time, Filipino comfort women went public with their stories. The Malaya Lolas, a group of 99 women, decided they would not stay silent. Si Lola Rosa, lumantad siya, 1992 pa lang. Kaya kami naglakas loob. Sabi namin, aba, eh, de lalong tayong pwedeng lumanta dito dahil hindi mass rape lang ang nangyari. Masaker ng buong barangay. Minasaker lahat ang lalaki rito, sinunod lahat ang aming bahay. Pinatay yung mga lalaki, nakatakot-takot ang pahirap. Kinuhang ang mga ari-arian. It was hell on earth on that day for the entire village of Mapaniki. This school was literally raised to the ground. So they brought all of the townsmen to this school, and then the Japanese soldiers gunned them all down. And then they burned the building, consequently burning all the people inside as well. All this in full view of the women and children. Nung wala na silang, wala nang natirang bahay dito, wala nang makitang mga kalalakihan. Ayon ang ginawa sa aming mga kababaihan, mga batang maliliit na lalaki, 
pinagsunong kami ng lahat ng kinurak nila sa bahay, pinadala doon sa bahay na pula. Katakot-takot ang hirap namin bago kami nakarating sa bahay na pula dahil ang tatawirin mo dalawang sapa, dalawang krik. Putik na halos yung dinadaanan namin. Pag nahinahin na ako ng lakad, sisipain ka pa. O kaya susundutin ka ng baril, halos madapa ka pa. Lumalangoy ka pa sa sapa. The Red House was someone's private property that the Japanese soldiers decided to occupy temporarily. In 2012, the Lolas took us there and painfully recalled the horror of their experience. Noong nakapahinga na sila, nakapagsigarilyo na, kinapa na kami ganyan, pinaghila-hila na kami, pinaghiwahiwalay kami. Noong nakapagpinagpisa kami. Ako nila naman ako ang kamalaw na nalitin sa ano naman. Eh, inuubuan ako ng ganyan. Naalis na. Eh, hindi nila ma-ano. Binatin niya ko yung dalawa kong paa, dalawang kamay. Dahil hinihipuan ako. Sinuntok ito. Dalawa kong hita. Binirahan na ako. Ala, na ano ako, naunat ako. Na... I'm <laughs> 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 Sorry sa amin na pagbabayaran ng mga dinawang sa amin. Kaso wala? Kaso wala. Wala ko ilang pag-alusong rin ang maabot sa amin ng mga sa mga So this is the so-called Red House. As you can see, it's still standing, but most of its interior has been torn down. It's unclear why, but residents around here say it's possible that the property is up for sale. While the comfort women in the Philippines have at least been apologized to personally by a Japanese Prime Minister and were beneficiaries of a citizen's fund, the Malaya Lolas have gotten nothing because what happened to them was deemed as rape, not that they were used as sex slaves. They are not comfort women. Comfort women are those um, women who were uh, by force uh, brought to a hostel stay there for three months or six months. They were uh, used, you know, to energize the soldiers. So how does that affect your fight and their fight? There is a, a, a big effect, uh, Barnaby, because at the time when the Asian Women Fund uh, gave assistance to the comfort women, of course, the Malaya Lolas did not receive any because they're not identified as comfort to women. Attorney Suarez and her associates have sought help from Philippine courts, the executive department, and even Japanese lawmakers to officially recognize the Malay Lolas as wartime victims. But all those efforts failed. The Philippine Supreme Court wouldn't compel the government to represent the Lolas. And the Japanese Supreme Court, in turn, would not hear their case until the Philippine government represented them. Their last hope is a case filed in 2019 before the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Violence Against Women. That's currently still pending. The Malay Lola started with 99 women. Today, only 26 are alive. And since they're all in their 80s and 90s, time is running out. Lola Lita was still strong and youthful when I saw her nearly 10 years ago. I almost could not recognize her this time. Oh. Hi, po, Lola. Nanibago ka, Lola. No? Ito po, galing po kay Eterni. Oh, mga itlog po, tsaka ito po para sa inyo. Yan, Lola, magpakasawa ka sa itlog. And sure. Gatas po. <laughs> Lola! 
Oo, oh, hindi mo pa ako nakakita na kilala kasi uh, mas gwapo ako ngayon. <laughs> Oy. <laughs> hindi. Si hindi, na niya, hindi na nila ako maaalala. Nandito po ako ng 2012. Ininterview ko po kayo noon. Pumunta po tayo sa Red House. Nung time na yon. Tas... Ikaw ang natatandaan niya, sabi niya, si Lola Lita ang in-interview ko at yung kapatid ni Lola Lita. Tsaka si Lola Belen. Yan. Lola, ah, si Lola Belen. Miling. Opo. Kaya, Wala na po siya. Lola Lita, Lola Miling, Lola Belen. Kamusta po? Ano pong sakit niyo? Tabaga. Sa puso po. Sa puso. I'm so happy na, na, na nakita ko po kayo after almost 10 years. Nakakita <laughs> po tayo. Nung 2012 po, taong 2012. Ano, laban, laban pa rin po ba? Laban pa rin. Galit pa po ba kayo? Sa mga hapon. Sa mga hapon po. Mm -hmm. Hapon. Mm. Siyempre naman. Ay. Okay. But her sister, Lola Miling, feels differently now. She's all but given up on the legal battle. Sa sundalong hapon, sa gobyernong hapon, masama talaga yung loob ninyo. Ay, hindi naman. Hindi na din. Hindi na rin. Wala na nga yun eh. Oh. Diba? Magpatawad na ako. Matanda na ako. Nung huli ko kasing us usap sa inyo, nung huli ko punta dito, galit po kayo eh. Ano, galit kami. Pero sa tingin niyo po ba, maaabutan niyo pa yon yung araw na makakamit niyo yung hustisa? May kasi merong mehawak ng buhay ko eh. Hmm. Hindi ko alam kung Mamatay ako bukas, hindi ko nakakamit. Ako huwag naman bukas. <laughs> There is an air of resignation. Not surprisingly, after years of seeking justice and getting neglected. But both the Malaya Lolas and Comfort Women agree it hasn't been for nothing. Together with Korean, Chinese and other Asian victims of Japanese wartime sexual slavery, Attorney Suarez believes they'd set the president for the modern Me Too movement. The courage exhibited by the Lolas in coming out after long years uh, of you know, so, uh, being silent, yes, uh, it became uh, you know, a moving factor. It, it gives a courage to all other women, to all other girls who were once violated in it. That, that uh, it's never too late to come out in the open, and it's never too late to, uh, to, to fight for themselves. You know, violence can only be stopped if you come out in the open. The Malaya Lolas even wrote a song to keep reminding the world of their language. Pilipinas ay walang kapara sa lupit ng hapon na minadama sa iyo. Without justice, they hope that at the very least, when they're all gone and they look down from heaven, they'll see that their tragedy never happens again. For Simon Asia, I'm Barnaby Lowe.
Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas to our show by contacting us on social media. Oh, my God.